Hey, this is Chris Plush from CG Masters. In this step-by-step -step project, we'll be creating a fully procedural houndstooth pattern. And this is what that pattern looks like. But even more simply, this is what it really looks like. Then this pattern is repeated all over. So let's break down what we need to do to create this. So there are four sections to this pattern. The top right quadrant is just a black square, and the bottom left quadrant is just a white square. They'll be easy enough to make with the checker texture. Now for the striped quadrants at the top left and bottom right, each have one, two, three, four checkered stripes going diagonally. There are many ways to create diagonal lines with nodes, but alignment will be key here. And using a Voronoi texture will more easily give us perfect alignment than any other method. But let's start things off by making the one single black square in the pattern. So here in Blender, I've already deleted everything in my scene. And now I'll press Shift and A, and I'll add in a mesh plane to work with. And then I'll press NumPad 7 for top view. And let's zoom in on that. Now let's split the window, so I'll go to the top right corner, left click on that and drag it to the left, and then let's change this editor type over here to the shader editor. Then I'll press the N key to get rid of the right side toolbar, and let's start off by giving this a new material. So I'll click on the new button up there, and we'll rename this to Houndstooth. And for this we actually don't need the principled node, so I'm going to left click on that to select it, and then press delete to get rid of it. We're not going to need that because we're just going to be focusing on the pattern right now. And for that, we can just use some preview nodes, which reminds me, make sure you have Node Wrangler enabled in your user preferences. For that, you can go to the edit menu, go down to preferences, and in the add-ons tab, type node in the search field there and make sure you've enabled Node Wrangler right here. That just gives us a set of hotkeys that really come in handy when creating shaders. So let's start things off now by pressing Shift and A and from the texture menu, we'll add in a checker texture. Now, this is going to be a pattern that will need to lay flat on all surfaces, so it'll be best to use UV coordinates for this. So your objects will need to be UV unwrapped in order to use this shader. The plane is already unwrapped by default, so we don't need to worry about unwrapping it. And now let's add in a texture coordinate node so that we can actually use UV coordinates. So I'll press Shift and A again, and from the input menu, I'll add in a texture coordinate node. And every texture node that we use, we're going to plug the UV coordinates from this node into that. So let's plug UV from there into the vector input of the checker texture. All right, now let's preview what we have so far. So over in the 3D view, let's press the Z key and choose Material Preview Mode. Then I'll hold Control and Shift and left click on the checker texture node. Then Node Wrangler connects that node or the top output of that node to an emission node here so that we can preview it. But let's get a preview of the factor output here, which will be black and white, which is what we want. To get a preview of the next output down, hold Control, Shift, and left click on that again, and then we'll get a preview of that socket. And all right, cool. But we just want four squares in this space, though, so that we can work on just the isolated pattern for the houndstooth. So let's turn the checker texture scale down to two. And then we'll get a two by two checker grid over here. Now we just need the top right black square, though. So what we can do is create a white band across the bottom that kind of overrides the black square down here. That way we'll have three white squares and one black one. And we can do that by using another checker texture. So let me left click on the checker texture node to select it. Then I'll press Shift and D to duplicate it and move it down to right there. Now to create a white band from this checker texture, let's press Shift and A. And from the vector menu, we'll add in a mapping node. Let me space these things out a little bit. Now with the mapping node, we can stretch these checker textures infinitely wide so we end up with just two black and white bands going horizontally. So to do that, first let's connect the vector output to the vector input of the checker texture. And again, we want to use UV coordinates for every texture node that we use. So let's plug the UV coordinates into the vector input of the mapping node. And now let's get a preview of what we have so far. I'll hold Control, Shift, and left click on this checker texture twice to preview the factor output. Okay, so it looks exactly the same as the other one so far, but now we've got a mapping node that we can use to stretch it. So let's play around with the, where's it at? The X scale here. You can see it's going to stretch it or squash it on the X axis. Let's turn the scale down to zero and it stretches it infinitely wide and we end up with a white band on top and a black band on the bottom. So we've got a black and white mask to use now. And what I want to do is use this by replacing the bottom stripe with the color white and the top stripe will have that single black square in the top right corner still. 
So let's go over here and I'll press Shift and A. And from the color menu, I'll add in a mix RGB node. And let me move it up there. So with this mix node, we can mix two different colors or two different inputs together. And we can mix them using a mask if we plug that mask into the factor value here. So let's plug our mask down here into that by plugging the factor output into the factor input of the mix node. And let's preview this by holding Control, Shift, and left clicking on it. So our black and white mask from down here is now mixing these two different colors. So for example, if we change color one to red, you can see the stripe that was black in our mask is now showing color number one. And the stripe that was white is showing color number two. So that's great. Now we just need to change these colors to be the right inputs. So we want the bottom stripe to be white. So let's go ahead and click on that color field and we'll increase RGB all the way up to one so we have a pure white. And we want the top stripe here just to be the original checker texture that had that black, that black square at the top right. So I'll plug that factor value in as color number two, and there we go. All right, so now we have two quadrants completed. We've got the black square in the top right, and we've got a white square at the bottom left. Now we just need to get diagonal stripes in this square and this one. And for that, we'll need four diagonal stripes going through each quadrant. Now there's a few ways to create diagonal stripes. You might be tempted to use something like the horizontal bands we created with the checker texture, and then just rotate those bands 45 degrees and scale them. And you can test that out if you want, but rotating those bands will make them difficult to align perfectly. But luckily the Voronoi texture is great for precision alignments, especially when it comes to aligning with a checker texture. If you've seen my carbon fiber tutorial, you've already seen how well the Voronoi texture aligns with checker textures. It's a fantastic combo for making patterns. So over in the shader editor here, let's press Shift and A, and from the texture menu, I'll add in a Voronoi texture. And let's bring this down here a little bit. And now let's press Control, Shift, and left click on that to get a preview of the distance output. Okay, so how the heck do we turn this into diagonal lines? Well, if we switch the dimensions of the texture over to 1D, then it can give us some interesting patterns, including diagonal lines. 1D will produce an effect on a single axis, so we can create lines with it. And it's the W value right here that's used for the result. Right now, W is set to a single value, so we're seeing a single color as a result in the end. So it's not really useful unless we plug more interesting information into it, like texture coordinates, for example. So let's go ahead and plug our UV coordinates into the W input of the Voronoi texture. And there we go. Now we've got some diagonal lines. When using texture coordinates, every point on the surface has a different value. So all of these different values will produce different lines when run through this texture, and we end up with diagonal lines. Let's turn the randomness value here down to zero though, so we can perfectly space out those lines. But now we need solid bands instead of gradients. So let's press Shift and A, and from the converter menu, add in a math node, and just drag it over that line until it highlights and drop it there to connect it. And let's change this from add to, where's it at? Less than. And we'll turn the threshold down to 0.25. And there we go. Now, just to give you an idea of what the less than node does, it takes all of the brightness values from the distance output, and any values that are greater than 0.25 become black lines, and any values that are less than 0.25 become white lines. And in the end, this is the result. We get these diagonal bands, all of them being the same exact width. All right, so now we need four bands in each block, so that's gonna be eight bands total. Right now, we don't have eight bands going through this. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, then a piece of one up there and a piece down there. So let's increase the Voronoi texture scale here up to six, and that should give us what we need. So we, now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then half of one up there and half down there. So technically we do have eight, but we'll need to center these better. So let's press Shift and A, and from the input menu, or no, from the vector menu, let's add in a mapping node. And I'll drag it over that line and drop it there so it connects. So we'll need to change the X location here to offset these and center them perfectly. Now I played around with this and I found that a value of 0.125 or 1 8 gives us the exact offset we need to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 full bands. And right now these are running the wrong way. We want them running from bottom left to top right. So let's just rotate these on the Z axis. I'm gonna type in 90 degrees and there we go, perfect. And now let's mix these stripes in with the single black square we created. So let me hold Control and Shift 
and I'll right click and drag between these two nodes and Node Wrangler connects them with a mix RGB node right here. And let me space things out a little bit better. So right now the mix factor is set to 0.5 so it's combining both of those textures 50-50. Not exactly what we want. We want the stripes to show up only in the top left and bottom right quadrants. And for that we'll need a mask that we can plug into this factor value. We actually already have a mask right here. Our first checker texture, if I hold Control, Shift, and left click on that twice to preview it, is the perfect mask to use because we can just replace the white squares here with the stripes. So let me hold Control, Shift, and left click on this mix node again. And let's connect this factor output from the original checker texture into the factor input of the mix node, and there we go. And again, with masks, the white squares, which have a numerical value of 1, are going to show the bottom color, which was our stripes, and the black squares, which have a numerical value of 0, are going to show the top color, which is our black and white square quadrants. So now we're almost finished, but we do need to invert the colors for the stripes at the top left quadrant here. They're all backwards right now. So for that, let me press Shift and A over here, and from the color menu, I'll add in an invert node. And let's drag it over this line here and drop it there so it connects. Now, first, this inverts everything, but I just want to invert what's on the top left here. And for that, we can use the original bands that we created right here. If we use these bands as invert values, the white band has a numerical value of 1, so everything up top will invert fully, and the black band has a numerical value of 0, so nothing on the bottom will be inverted. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So let's press Control, Shift, and left click on the mix node again to get a preview of it. And let's plug this checker texture's factor output in as the factor input for the invert node, and there we go. And that is perfect. So now we have our base pattern, but now let's create a master scale control to control the density of it all. And for that, let's head back to our texture coordinate node right here. Now what I want to do is scale the UV coordinates before those coordinates are sent out to all of the texture nodes. So we're going to need a reroute node. So let's left click on the texture coordinate node to select it, then press Shift and W for the Node Wrangler menu, and go down to Add Reroutes and choose Two Linked Outputs. That'll add this little reroute node right here, which will separate the texture coordinate node from all those lines stemming out from it. I think there's a hotkey for that too, but I forget what it is. But now what we have left is this single line right here, which we can sneak a mapping node into. So let's press Shift and A, and from the vector menu, add in a mapping node. Drag it over that line until it highlights, then left click and drop it there. And now we can adjust the entire texture scale by using these values here. But to be able to change all of them at the same time, let's press Shift and A, and from the input menu, add in a value node. And we'll plug this value into the scale socket right there. And now we can just change the scale using this one value node. And we can actually control the rotation of the texture here as well. Let me type in 180 for the Z rotation. And now we're all done. The pattern is now complete. And now you can plug this into a principled node or whatever you want to do with it. All right, and that's going to do it for this project. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to check out our course, The Blender Encyclopedia, an all-in-one type reference guide for Blender with over 52 hours of tutorials, including step-by-step -step projects, quizzes, and Q&A support. That'll do it for this video, though, so I'll see you around.